Hey guys, welcome back to this game development series where we are creating a 2D mobile game using Flutter and Flame Engine. So in the last video, we added code to create different types of enemies and we implemented the whole thing such that it will be easier for us to add new enemy types in future. Now the next step is to put a system in place which will spawn random enemies from right side of the screen. Because right now, we have only a single enemy in game. We just reset its X position once it goes off screen. But before we start implementing that, let's set up the score system. So for that, I'll go to Dino Game class in game.dart. Here, first I'll need a text component which will display the current score on screen. And then I'll also need an integer which will store the actual score. And just like all the other components, I'll initialize score text with the text component in Dino Games constructor. Text component needs a string that we want to display. So first, I'll set score to zero, and then we can pass score dot to string as input to text component. And finally, I'll add this score text to Dino Games component list. If I save this and do a hot restart. You can see that the text component is displayed at the top left corner. Right now, it displays score as 0. So let's add code to increase the score as time progresses. For that, I'll override the update method for this class. Now, I want the score to increase at a constant rate per frame. So I'll write score plus equal to 60 times t. Here, you can think of 60 as rate of increase of score. And as time is a double variable, the result of this product will be a double as well. So to store the answer in score, I'll call to int on it. So this will just update the value of score variable and not the score text component. To do that, I'll set score text dot text to score dot to string. As soon as I save this, you can see the score increasing. Now let's move this score text to top center of screen. For that, we'll need the resize method. In resize, I'll change the position of score text by using the setByPosition method. This method needs a position. So I'll create a new position with its x value as size.width and y value as 0. On saving this, you can see that score text moves, but its top left corner gets placed at the given position. And to bring text component exactly to center, we can decrease the x value of this position by half the width of score text. Now it looks perfectly centered. Now let's move on to implementing the enemy spawner. For that I'll create a new file called enemy underscore manager dot dart. And in this file I'll create a new class called enemy manager. Here we have two options. We can either create enemy manager as a normal dart object or we can derive it from component class from flame engine. But enemy manager will need to know current state of the game and it might also need to get updated every frame of the game. So it will be much easier if enemy manager is a component which we can add to dino game. So I'll extend enemy manager from component class. And as component is an abstract class, it forces us to implement the render and update method. So I'll just override these two methods with blank implementation. Next, let's add the default constructor which will take care of initializing everything. As enemy manager is going to spawn enemies randomly, it needs an object of random class. I'll initialize this random object in the constructor. Next, we need a timer which will wait for some time and then will automatically run code to generate a random enemy. So I'll set the wait time for this timer as 4 seconds. And since we want to keep it repeating, I'll set the repeat property to true. And finally, I'll add an empty callback function. Now for generating a random enemy, I'll create a new method called spawn random enemy. And this method will be called from callback function of this timer. In this spawn random enemy method, First, I'll get a random integer by calling nextInt method on random. If we check the definition of nextInt, 
you can see that it needs a max number as input. Basically, it generates a random number between 0 and given max number, excluding the max number. So, I want to use this number to select a corresponding type from enemy type variable, which means input max number to next int should be equal to number of elements in this enum. And the easiest way to get that number is to get the length of value list from enemy type. Once we have this random number, we can get the enemy type from value list using element at. And now I can pass this random enemy type as input to enemy constructor to create a new enemy. So now we have a new enemy object, but for it to get displayed in the game world, it has to be first added to the dino games component list. But right now we don't have a reference to dino games instance because we are inside the enemy manager class. One way to get reference to dino game instance is to pass it as input to enemy managers constructor and then store it as a class member for later use. But there is an even better way of doing this using mixin. So flame engine provides a mixin called hasgameref which you can slap onto any component class. Adding this mixin exposes a reference to parent game object to which this component gets added. And to make things even easier, we can even specify our own class type which is derived from base game or game class. So I'll specify dino game here. And now I can use the game ref variable which comes from has game ref to access the parent dino game. On game ref we have two methods to add a component. One is add and other one is add later. If you want, you can read the documentation of both the methods for details. But to explain in short, add should be used only when you are sure that game loop has not started yet. At all the other places, always use add later. This makes sure that we do not modify the components list while game loop is still processing that list and new components get added to the list only after current update cycle ends. So I'll add the new enemy to this list using add later. Now we have to start the timer so that enemies start spawning. We can do this in enemy managers constructor itself, but that is not the correct place to do it because it will start the timer as soon as enemy manager is created. We want the timer to start only when this enemy manager is added to components list of a game object. And for this, we can override the onMount method. This method gets called only when the component is added to a game instance. So in this method, I'll call timer.start. And as this is a timer from flame engine, it depends on the game loop for its update. So we'll have to call update of this timer explicitly in the update method of enemy manager. Now let's go to dino game class and add this enemy manager. For that I'll add a variable of type enemy manager and then in the constructor we can remove this code which creates an enemy directly. Here I'll now initialize the enemy manager and then I'll add it to the components list. And now let's save and do a hot restart. And as you can see, we got the first enemy as a bat. So the spawn random enemy is working as expected. But we also got two bats. This seems wrong because the enemies are spawning too fast. And I guess I know where the problem is. In the update method of enemy class, we have this code to reset the position of enemy if it goes off screen. As we don't need this anymore, let's remove it. But now we have to take care of enemies that are off the screen. So for that, I'll go to enemy class and override a method called destroy. The way this method works is after every update cycle, this method is called on every component of the component list. And all the methods that return true from this method are removed from the game and are destroyed. So in this method, I'll return true if the current x value of enemy is less than negative of enemy's width. And this will take care of deleting all the off-screen enemies. Now our game manager is pretty much complete. But in its current state, 
it can spawn enemies only at a constant rate which is one enemy per four seconds to make the game more challenging let's try to increase this rate of spawning depending on current score of player so first i'll add an int variable in enemy manager called spawn level this will indicate how aggressively enemies are being spawned initial value of spawn level will be zero which i'll initialize in the constructor then in the update method i'll try to calculate a new spawn level depending on the current score we can get the current score from game ref using game ref dot score this is the same int variable that we added in dino game class so i'll divide the score by 500 because i want the spawn level to increase every 500 score points now this division will result in a double value but we want the new spawn level in int so i'll use the to int method on this and in that there is a special operator for this so we can remove the to int and replace normal division with tilde division so once we get the new spawn level i'll check if current spawn level is less than new spawn level if this is true the first thing i'll do is set spawn level to new spawn level after this, we need to change the timer to reduce the wait time depending on the new spawn level. So first, I'll stop the current timer. And then, let's just copy the timer code from constructor. And at the end, I'll start the timer again. Okay, so now, this 4 needs to be changed depending on spawn level. You can apply whatever mathematical equation you want to get a new wait time. But make sure that graph of the equation is decreasing in nature. For example, I'll get the new wait time by dividing 4 by 1 plus 0.1 times the new spawn level. And this is how the graph of this equation will look. It starts at 4 and gradually goes on decreasing but never becomes 0. I'll add a debug print statement here to display the value of new wait time. And let's set this value in the timer as well. Now if I save this and do a hot restart, we should see the values in debug console after every 500 score points. As you can see, it printed 3.63. Then at 1000, it became 3.33. So in this way, wait time will keep on reducing as the score increases. And that will in turn spawn enemies faster. Okay. Now we have a pretty good enemy manager, but as you can see, right now the enemies just pass through dino. Ideally, in such case, dino animation should be changed to hit animation. So let's do that real quick. For that, I'll go to the update method of dino game class. Here, we have access to all the components currently in the game world. And this is just an ordered set. So to get all the enemy components from this set, I'll call the where type method on it. This method allows us to look for all the elements of a specific type. We'll pass in the type parameter as enemy. And to loop over all the returned enemies, I'll call for each. So inside this callback function of for each, we will receive each enemy. And in here, I'll get the distance between enemy and dino by calling dino.distance. And if the distance is less than 20, I'll call dino.hit. Now if I save this, we should see the hit animation being played when dino gets hit. And it worked. But right now, the animation does not switch back to run. So let's fix that. For this, I'll add a timer in dino class. And in the constructor, I'll initialize this timer. Let's set its limit to 2 seconds. The repeat property is by default false, so I'll not specify it. And in the callback function, I'll call the run method. This will make sure that whenever timer completes, it automatically sets the animation to run animation. Now in the hit method, after setting the current animation to hit animation, we can start the timer. And to make the timer work, I'll call its update method from update of dino. Now I can save this and do a hot restart and this should work. And as you saw, after 2 seconds of getting hit, 
the animation changed back to run animation. But now we have one more problem. The heat detection logic that we have written does not work correctly all the time. But before we fix this, let's make sure that we skip all the code inside hit method if dino is already in hit state. For this, I'll add a boolean variable in dino class. Its initial value will be false in constructor. So in the hit method, I'll move all the code inside if check, which will execute only if is hit is false. And inside this, I'll set is hit to true. And similarly, in run method, I'll set is hit to false. This will make sure that we do not execute the code inside hit when dino is already in hit state. Okay, so now to fix the issue of some hits not getting detected, we'll have to change the origin of dino and all the enemies to their actual center. Right now, all the calculations are done based on the top left corner as origin. Having the origin at center of the sprite will make the hit detection much better. For this, I'll go to dino constructor and set this dot anchor to anchor dot center. And same needs to be done for enemy class too. So once we do this and do a hot restart, you can see that now dino and enemy have moved up a little. This is because the calculations we did in resize method were based on origin of components being at top left corner. So to fix this, all we have to do is divide the height of component by 2 in resize method of both dino and enemy class. And as you can see, now all the sprites are on the ground again. So one last thing that I want to do is, I want the bat to be able to be spawned at two different heights because it is a flying enemy. For that, I'll go to enemy data class and add a new boolean called canfly. This will have to be added to constructor as well. Now in the enemy details map of enemy class, we'll have to specify if the enemy can fly or not. So I'll set it to true only for bat and false for other type of enemies. And while we are at it, let's also add a speed parameter in enemy data so that each enemy can have a different speed. Again, this will also have to be added in constructor. I'll set some unique speed values for each enemy type in enemy details. And now in the enemy class, instead of storing so many parameters, we can just store a reference to enemy data of given enemy type. I'll call this as my data and we'll initialize it at the start of enemy constructor. And now I can use it at all the places. These two lines are now not needed, so let's remove them. We also don't need this size anymore, so let's remove that as well. Also in update method, we can get the speed from my data. Now, to change the y coordinate of bat, we'll have to add code in resize method. Here, after setting up everything, I'll check if my data dot can fly is true. If it is true, we can decide to move the bat at a different height. But as I don't want it to happen always, I'll use a random boolean value. For that, I'll add a static random generator in enemy class so that it can be shared between all the enemy instances. And then in resize, I'll combine canfly with random.nextBool so that this block will execute randomly even if canfly is true. And finally, inside this if block, I'll decrease this dot y by height of current enemy. Now let's save this and run the game. So first bat got spawned at normal height. And yes, this bat is spawned at a different height. This means our code is working perfectly fine. So that is it for this video. We made a lot of minor but important changes. And I hope you were able to follow along. If not, you can get the code from GitHub repository linked in the description. So if you liked this video, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing to this channel for more such content. I'll hope to see you in the next one.